Let's go straight out to Beirut where Farnas Fasihi is covering what's going on in Aleppo and in Syria generally. Farnas, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Simon. T tell us about Kofi Annan. Oh, well, Kofi Annan um, uh, quit his uh, mission today, be being the you know, appointed uh, Arab League mediator between the Syrian opposition and the Syrian government. Um, he has about um, uh, another few weeks until the end of the month left of his mandate as the mediator. He said he would complete that. But he was also very clear that the reason he was resigning was because he saw no hope for diplomacy anymore in Syria, that there was no international will to push the Syrian government uh, into a concession, that the uh, rebels were uh, increasingly becoming more um, violent um, and armed, um, and that uh, the, the, in in addition to that, the two sides didn't really uh, seem to have an incentive to negotiate uh, because violence had continued even as he was trying to uh, mediate between them. Yeah, and, and Farnas, there's a great quote here. It says, as, um, sorry, it says, um, I can't want more peace more than the protagonists, more than the Security Council or the international community for that matter. Is he, what, what, what is he basically saying there? He's basically saying that he had he wanted peace more than the international community and uh, the, the the two sides in Syria that that there was no genuine will on uh, on any of these uh, of the parties involved to actually come to an agreement uh, and and that's very uh, alarming uh, for Syria observers because they think that if diplomacy fails uh, the only way forward is going to be um, chaos and sectarian warfare and more of what we're seeing now in the streets of Aleppo. Hmm. And talking of Aleppo, um, we're hearing uh, speculation that the, uh, the what we have seen so far in Aleppo, which has been carnage and hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighting, might be just a warm-up for something even bigger. That's right. We were hearing today that the um, uh, Syrian army um, is uh, deploying um, reinforcement uni uh, units for uh, the city of Aleppo. Uh, an activist we spoke to said that uh, a Republican Guards Brigade was heading from Damascus to Aleppo, uh, and there's a video uh, on YouTube that shows a large convoy, military convoy, carrying tanks and um, heavy armor uh, going from uh, one city toward Aleppo on the highway. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the city of Aleppo um, has had a communication blackout since last night. Phone lines are down, mobiles are not working, and Internet's cut. And what we've this is a pattern that regimes use when they uh, are planning a large offensive because they want um, there to be um, uh, no news going out of whatever's happening. So this is inc extremely alarming. It, it, it does sound extremely alarming. And they, just to put this in context, my understanding is, is that um, Syrian army forces, those loyal to Assad, have already been using uh, jets to bomb neighborhoods of Aleppo. Right. They're using jets to bomb uh, neighborhoods. They're also shelling from a distance neighborhoods that are controlled by the rebels. So maybe now they're planning to go in to demolish perhaps more neighborhoods. Um, we, we don't know what the military plan is, but, um, but we, well, we just have to wait and see. But it seems like something is building up. Okay. You know, Aleppo is a very strategic city. If Assad loses Aleppo, it will give the opposition a tremendous amount of momentum, uh, and it would also be seen as a major political and strategical defeat for him. So he can't oh. have, um, uh, you know, Aleppo basically um, fall from his power, from his grip. Okay, well, we shall see, and we shall check back in with you uh, shortly on that.